those of you who got an invite, welcome to Nerd Prom. <laughs> no matter where in the world you are, we're all Nerds International. With the hyphen. Don't break YouTube, it's Mr. Mean coming at you from very sunny Beaumont, Texas. Aftermath of Hurricane Harvey, we are live and well. Uh, we are without running water, uh, potable water, uh, hot or cold. Uh, thankfully to our uh, illustrious city planners and their dumbassery, uh, they let the pumps flood um, and didn't take appropriate precautions as far as we know. We don't know the whole story, but uh, this is not a political rant because I am not a political person. I don't give a shit about politics. I, I honestly believe that our opinions matter not. But that's a rant for another time. Long story short is our city government failed us horribly, and now I am stuck in Beaumont with no way to get my wife and my kid out because all of the flooding, because they've opened up all the, the, the outlying uh, ducts and pumps and everything to ease the pressure off of, of the area, um, which is great because we're no longer flooded and we're no, no longer underwater. Um, my house did not flood. It came real close. But uh, we did not flood. I do have a minor uh, roof leak, um, but it's, it's nothing major, and it'll be taken care of after uh, life gets back to normal. Um, so if you follow me on Facebook, I posted a couple videos there uh, for those that can get to it. I keep my Facebook pretty private um, only because, um, well, I just, I'm not a big Facebook guy. Um, and I don't believe I, I posted any of those videos to uh, YouTube or to uh, uh, my G Plus channel, which I might do. I, they're on my phone, so it's, it's not hard to actually upload them. Anyway, as the title says, this is a follow-up after Kickstarter for Conan by Monolith Games. Um, we got to play last night. Uh, we're all locked down. Like I said, we can't get out of the state. Uh, they Actually, we tried to leave yesterday. The, the news, the local Channel 12 news here in Beaumont, told us that the freeway on the I-10 was open and that they had checked with the Louisiana side because we have family in Louisiana and Sulphur, which is about an hour away from us told us that the freeway was open and that they had checked with Louisiana, and Louisiana said their side is open, so it was open. Well, they lied. Again, another reason why I don't watch the news, they're full of shit. Um, we got uh, not even uh, 10 miles out of Beaumont, actually right to the port of Beaumont, and the uh, Highway Patrol and uh, DOT Texas turned us around, said nobody can leave, they've closed the road. Reason being is because they opened those valves again and it caused flooding on I-10 from the rivers and tributaries and everything that are around here. So anyway, long story short, we're screwed. We're stuck in Beaumont. We do have water. We have food. We have baby food. We have lots of diapers. Everything is good. Don't worry about us. We are okay. But uh, I was bored last night. I've been cabin fever. I've been cooped up all week with the rain and everything. Um, I've been out of work for the whole week. I did go into work on Monday, um, and they sent me home uh, just because there was really nothing to do. And then, of course, uh, I think it was Wednesday, we lost water. Um, they, uh, they had the, the pumps flooded and they, they turned the water off so we've been without water but we have, I, I call them uh, ditches uh, but they're runoffs basically for all the uh, extra water I went out there and filled up two big garbage cans full of water so that at least we can flush our toilet and, and all that kind of stuff so we have the bare necessities of life we're okay, just can't take showers so <laughs> you don't want to smell me right now anyway, enough of that that rant, um we were bored out of our mind last night, so I went over to my buddy John's house, and uh, his wife and his son and him and I played Conan. And let me tell you, it was fun. Um, learning curve, a little bit of a learning curve. Um, if you haven't played this type of board game, if you've played like Descent or Star Wars board game, I think they call it Imperial Assault Kickstarter because it's got to conserve water. Um... It's a little bit of a learning curve. It's not bad. <clears throat> and what prompted me to really want to play it, because I got this Kickstarter last year in 2016. I don't even remember. I think summertime, so it hasn't been too, too long. I did a, a review on it. I'll put a link to that video down in the, uh, the notes below. Um, but um, that was basically an unboxing video because uh, I hadn't played the game. I, I, I barely read the rules. So I didn't know much about this game. I was excited. The miniatures, it was like 219 miniatures I got. Or something, 217, 213, it's something crazy like that. I'll never paint them. 
but anyway, um, the rule book they had had some, I guess, some typos and some errors. It was just stuff that got missed. So what they did is, and I guess enough people uh, cried out and after playing the game and said, "Look, the rules are fucked. Fix it." And so they fixed it. I got a package in the mail about two weeks ago from China, and I was like, "What the hell?" Because um, I didn't really know what it was. I mean, I, I saw the emails from Kickstarter saying they were sending me something. I didn't pay it. I just thought it was leftover stuff from the pledge. It was the updated rule book, version 2.0. There's the Heroes book and then the Overlords book. The novel approach to what they do to this game that I really liked, and I did not look at version 1 of the rule books. So I don't know if it's the same way. I believe it is from the cursory glance that I gave it. You give the Heroes book to all of your players, and then you as the Overlord read this book. So it's different in a lot of other games where you have to slog through the rule book and you have to learn everything. I only needed to worry about what I needed to know as the Overlord. And the players only needed to know what they needed to know. Um, and this has the advent the Overlord's book has the adventures in it and has all my basic rules pretty well laid out. I didn't have much of a beef with it. In fact, really, I didn't have any beef with it. There's a couple little things that left a little bit delay. Like there's a little fireball icon that's uh, rejuvenation. They really don't tell you what that's for. And then there's a crow or a raven, depending on how you want to call it, uh, card that goes in your in your row. And when that comes up, the way I gather it, and if anybody knows, please post down in the notes. But the way I took it is I got, in the very first scenario, I got four uh, resurrection points, uh, reinforcement points. And I could spend those points to resurrect the guys, you know, that were in this row. So... Um, it's kind of how we played it. We just went with it, and it seemed to work okay. Um, we used the suggested heroes, which was Conan, Shavatis, and then Hadro Hadrothus. Uh, we used those three players, uh, characters, and then I, of course, was the Overlord. And we went by the, the special rules that are that are down here. And it was nothing amazing. It was all very simple stuff. Um, the w one thing I will say is we we did have a point of contention with uh, Hadrothus' spells. His uh, Mitra's Halo spell really didn't make a whole lot of sense. You can only cast it while you're in the cautious stance, but the moment you change stances, you lose it. And now you can cast it the way I read it. You could cast it as a reaction. So if you're about to be attacked and you're in cautious, you could cast it if you had the stones to spend during your turn um, because it goes away at the beginning of your next turn. And, and or goes away if you change stance from cautious to aggressive or whatever it's called on the player side. I forgot, to be honest. Um, that's how we rolled it, and that's how we went with it. So everything seemed to work except for that. We kind of thought that was kind of a useless spell. I ruled it that you could do it that way, and it seemed to work. It didn't really break the game. Uh, Danny, uh, the son that was playing Hadrathus, um, he almost died twice. I, I, he walked up to a hut where and I had three picked uh, hunters in there, and they just jumped out and started to beat the shit out of him, and uh, it was great. Um, so anyway, um, that's the that's the you know so the rule book's pretty well laid out. Like I said, they go through everything very succinctly, and from what I could see, um, John was reading the my friend John was reading the hero's book. Um, and he, he seemed to grasp it real quick, had no problems with it. Um, he's a relatively smart guy, even for working for the cities. Yeah. But, uh, so pick on John there. Um, but, uh, yeah, it went real well. He played Conan. Um, he cleaned house. Conan, the, the entry level Conan, which is this guy right here is no joke. He, he cleaned out. He was able to get over there to where, uh, Hadrathus was being picked on by three picked warriors, and he killed all three of them. Just whack, whack, whack. He just knocked them out. So it was pretty cool. So basically, in the package I got two weeks ago from China, I had these updated rule books, and then about a month before that, I got another package in the mail um, with this in it, which I didn't know I was getting this. So this was a nice surprise. This is the Conan, the Legend of the Devil in Iron, and it is a campaign. So if you've played uh, Journey, Descent, Journeys into Darkness, and you've got that campaign book, there's a hardback book that they put out for Descent, this is basically the same thing. Um, very cool. Um, awesome art. There's a prologue in here. I mean, Adrian Smith's art, 
some of Paulo Parente's art. They go through the card list. I think I got what I got in this package was all the cards and special things that I need to play this adventure. I've already put them in the big box. Um, let me segue into that. If anybody has any cool storage ideas for the box on how they like organize their miniatures in a tackle box or if they used some drop me a link uh, or send me your video or whatever. I'm going to go do some research myself, but I realized after I punched out some of the stuff and tried to put it back in the original box, I can't close the box all the way. That's okay, but it makes stacking them and stuff, and I don't want to ruin anything because it's a gorgeous game. Um, but this is an adventure. There are log sheets and uh, basically hero sheets and scenario sheets. Uh, you can keep track of your characters. Um, the scenario, Overlord's scenario... Uh, experience sheet, the scenario hero campaign, they can get up to, uh, you have Amra the Lion, Zalata, Savage Belit, and Nagora. And they can go up to level 3. And it just, uh, it gives you the layout and everything. I don't know if you can see that. It gives you the layout. It's, it's just basically a campaign guide. It tells you how to set it up. It gives you some notes for the Overlord. And then it's it's hardback, beautiful art, fully illustrated all the way through it. It's beautiful. I don't know if this will be on sale for non-Kickstarter backers. I'm not sure if you can buy it. I was on Monolith's website. I did not see it for sale. I didn't look that hard. I was just looking for scenarios and stuff because, like I said, we played last night. We played the intro adventure that is in the Overlord's uh, rule book, and it was phenomenal. We actually enjoyed ourselves very much. So, um, like I said, these are the revised rule books. These are also available online for free so if you bought the retail version you can go download these print them out at your local kinkos or whatever office depot and uh you'll have them um you know spiral bound them or whatever um i'm probably going to do that because i can see i'm just flipping through these last night they're already getting banged up a little bit and i like to keep my stuff nice but uh, i will say it was a fun game we all liked it we all walked away feeling they the heroes won the uh emphasis of the scenario was they had to kill zogar sag um who was like the picked shaman although for this intro adventure he had no spells um and i'm sure that would make a big difference um in in playing the adventure um and then they had to rescue princess um Yasalda, I think her name is, or Yaselda. They had to rescue her and then get off the map. And they get off the map by just expending movement points to actually exit anywhere on, on the four entrance points of the map. Uh, so it was a relatively pretty easy. I mean, there was a lot of critters. They fought about six picked hunters, three picked warriors, which were these big dudes with hammers, and they were pretty beef. They had two armor. They fought uh, five hyenas, which were the pets of the picked. Um, a giant snake. Uh, the cool part was Hadrathus has a teleportation spell. And the way we read the spell, he just spends his little power points, his tokens, and he can teleport. And so he literally teleported into the room. He, he banked up a turn. He got into the corner of the map where he was safe. He teleported into the room. They didn't know what room the princess was in. I kept everything off the map until they kicked down a door or broke through it. And then I put the creatures in the room. Or if they walked by a door, I ambushed them by jumping out of the room. So it was it was a lot of fun. Um, I mean, they saw what miniatures were on the table um, just because of the way our space and our table was set up. So they kind of knew what was coming, but they didn't know what order it was coming in. So it was a lot of fun. And uh, I put the princess in with the giant snake. There's a huge snake. It, it's one of the models. It's a gorgeous model. Um, and... Uh, I put put her in there with the snake, and she's unconscious. She counts as encumbrance when you pick her up and everything like that. So it can affect you if you have too much gear and stuff. He didn't have anything. He played it smooth. Um, he teleported in. All he has to do is make a simple manipulation roll uh, to pick her up. He make and it's simple, so he automatically succeeds. So he picks her up and he teleports out. He had the crystals. He teleported the fatigue, whatever you want to call it. And he teleported out and he got off the map. And they had already killed uh, the the wizard or the shaman. So it was a lot of fun. It took us, I don't know, we played for maybe two, three hours. And that was unboxing everything, setting up, reading the rules. Uh, John was reading the player rules. I was reading the overlord rules to ourselves. We were bouncing things back off of each other. So all in all said and done, very fun. I, I enjoyed it. I think if you see this in your local you know, game store or whatever... 
and you want a, a, a campaign-esque type game that you can get a lot of use out of, go for it. Um, I don't know if you get the extra... The, if you watch my video, you see I have two big boxes. I have the main Conan board game, which comes with several miniatures and comes with all the rules and everything you need to play. And then I have a second box, which is nothing but miniatures, extra cards, and min uh, uh, another game board uh, in there. They use like a 4x4 four four or 2x2 two, two two board, and you fold it out, and it's, it's you watch the video, you'll see. Um, but that second box is part of the King's Pledge, and you get a shit ton of stuff, and I got all of that for $135. Plus, I think, shipping, and I think shipping was like 30 40 bucks. Um I, I waited like two years or a year and a half for it or whatever, but it was totally worth it. Like I said, we played last night. We had a lot of fun. So it's definitely one we're going to play again. Um, again, if you have any cool transportation ideas on how to you know package this stuff up and move it, I'm telling you, it was a pain in the ass to carry those two big boxes and that book because I didn't want to put the book inside the box because it's a hardback book, so I didn't want to mess up anything. Um, the miniatures are a temporary... They, the case they give you is a cardboard with really flimsy plastic uh, inserts that the miniatures lay in. And it's good enough for storage, but I think for normal gameplay, they're going to tear apart pretty quick. The boxes are going to wear out because they're thin cardboard. Uh, for shipping purposes, I mean, it keeps it all, you know, if you're buying it as a present for someone, don't worry. It's going to ship fine. Mine came on a slow boat from China, and there's no damage to it whatsoever. So if you pack the box pretty well, you know, the outside shipping box, it should be fine. Um, let's see, any other thoughts? The miniatures are sculpted really well. I go over that in my first video, but I'll reiterate it again here for the people that don't want to watch it. Um, the miniatures are sculpted really well. The detail is pretty good. They are paint quality. You could paint these up, get some nice detail out of them. If you go on YouTube, you'll find several videos of people that have painted them, and they look great, um, especially the snake. Oh, man, the snake paints up really nice. Um, so I can't think of anything else, guys. I, I didn't want to do a long video. I, I did, did want to get something posted uh, because I did get a f couple emails and comments and messages about, you know, hey, is Mr. Mean still alive? I'm mean. You can't kill me. I'm, I'm mean. Uh, no little storm is going to take care of Mr. Mean. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, we are doing well. Everything's fine and dandy here. Norby, uh, my son, is seven months old, going on eight months. He's fantastic. My wife is doing well. Our work is closed because there's no, uh, there's, there's no facilities here. They can't, you know, they don't have to pay us, though. Unfortunately, Texas law says if you're uh, salaried and you're exempt, which my wife and I both are, they don't have to pay you. <clears throat> so that is what it is. But we can qualify for unemployment um, under the Texas uh, FEMA laws, uh, under FEMA law and Texas law. So we're going to put in for that. So we, we should be okay. Um, it's, uh, like I said, it's crappy weather. It's gorgeous out right now. Uh, the water is receding, but they keep opening up the floodgates to drain off the water and take the pressure off of the sewage and the water system which is still keeping I-10 flooded and 69 and, and Highway 90, which is all the ways that we can get out of Beaumont to get to Louisiana. So they're all flooded, so there's nothing we can do. we just got to hang tight until something gives and the water goes down and we can get through the roads, which probably, hopefully, will be tomorrow or Sunday. And then City of Beaumont says it's going to take them at least another week to get the water back up and going. So there's nothing we can do. So we're going to go... Uh, we're just going to hunker down basically un until possibly we can get out of the city. And uh, even then, I think at this point, it's just we might as well just stay because it's only going to be a couple more days. Um, and then we'll go from there. So, anyway, it's Mr. Mean. My reviews on the after Kickstarter for Conan by Monolith Games. It's, fan it's a buy in my book, Mr. Mean's Seal of Approval. Um, it played well, um, didn't really have a whole lot of problems. Uh, like I said, if you think we did that spell wrong, post in the notes down there and, get, and tell me why, explain, or point me to a rules fact. I went on the Monolith website. I didn't see a FAQ, an FAQ, so I don't know for whatever it's worth. But anyway, it was fun. It's a buy. If you see it or if you see it on eBay at a decent price or in your local game store and you're curious about it, pick it up. The miniatures alone are fantastic. And if you can pick up the King's Pledge... It's even more worth it because you get a lot of scenery. Uh, you get like, you know, a tavern. You get tables and chairs and book stands and weapons racks. 
that's all great miniatures and if you use miniatures in your your tabletop rpg you could totally use all this stuff and all the uh, extra miniatures you know if you're playing a fantasy game they'll fit in just fine um those those big picks can actually be orcs i mean it, they, they would totally work or they can just be barbarians but anyway that's mr mean's thoughts on the conan by monolith uh, after kickstarter uh review um i thought it was awesome give it a try pick it up and as always peace and hair grease and remember be nice